Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, we're gonna to answer another one of your commonly asked questions. Uh, this one, what's the deal with the different colors of the shells? So, um, Iowa-class battleships and many other types of artillery can fire multiple types of shells. So how does the gun crew know what they're selecting? This isn't like the age of sail, where if you're shooting a solid shot cannonball, it's the round one. And if you're shooting a grape shot, it's the one that's like a bunch of balls in a canvas bag. Real easy to tell. In modern warfare, the cases of the shells are relatively similar. So they paint them different colors to tell what they are. So first off, the yellow stripe at the top is the type of explosive that's inside of the shell. Uh, yellow means composition D, which is a plastic explosive uh, similar to C4, it's that sort of thing. Uh, so it's a relatively inert um, explosive until, of course, the uh, fuse sets it off. As far as I know, Iowa-class battleships exclusively used Comp D explosive fillers in their shells as the burster charges. The only shell that likely would not have had Composition D in it um, is this one, which shouldn't have a yellow cap, and the nuclear shell, the so-called uh, Project Katy shells. So neither one of those should have yellow stripes. So the other colors tell you uh, what the job of the shell is. The black shells are armor piercing. The green shells are high capacity. There are some other ways to tell the difference. The uh, high capacity shells have a slightly different nose on them. The armor piercing shells have a nose cone. And of course, these should all be six feet tall like this one. These shells are just fiberglass replicas. Uh, so to cheapen the process, we just made them all the same height. The high capacity rounds are the correct size here. So these are the two types of shells that the guns fire. You got the one with the time delay fuse, the armor piercing, and the one that explodes on impact, the high capacity. What in the heck is the blue one for? That's probably the most common question we get asked. Blue shells are called blind, loaded, and plugged, or BLMP rounds. They are primarily for training. Um, and instead of being filled with an explosive filler, the composition D, i.e. why there shouldn't be a yellow stripe on this, they are filled with sand instead, so they are inert. So if you are doing training, you don't need to fire an actual expensive armor-piercing shell at the target. You might do more damage to the target than you meant to, which then means you can't reuse the target. Um, and it's just a needless expense and hazard when you're doing training. So this one doesn't explode. However, it still has a brass base ring on the bottom. So this is what engages the rifling in the barrel of the gun to make it spin on its way out. That prevents the gases from escaping around the body of the projectile so that more of that force is directed on the base and it forces it to grip that rifling to be accurate. So that is how we know if a shell is supposed to be fired out of the gun or is just a display piece or used for some other training. Uh, if it's got a base ring, can be fired out of gun. If it doesn't have a base ring, isn't going to go anywhere when you try to fire it out of the gun. There is one other type of shells which some Iowa-class battleships may have gotten in the 80s that is known as a firecracker round. And instead of having a solid Comp D explosive in the inside, uh, 133 and a half pounds for your average high capacity round, it would have had uh, about 400 bomblets in it that would have been scattered over, I've heard as much as a nine acre area to as like an anti-personnel weapon or uh, light structures and unarmored things, vehicles and things like that. And that would have had 
a series of yellow diamonds painted under the yellow stripe around the base of the high capacity round. So that tells you this isn't going to destroy one building when you hit it. It's going to drop these bomblets over a wide area. Uh, and of course, the, the final type of shell that Iowa, Wisconsin, and New Jersey probably, although the Navy won't, uh, won't confirm, but they probably carried as many of 10 of these projectiles uh, between roughly 1956 and 1958, uh, is the Project Katy nuclear shell, which we believe, based on a single surviving example in a uh, New Mexico museum, was uh, painted more or less white overall. When you visit New Jersey today, you'll find two different flavors of five inch shells on board. There are these bare metal, all brass ones, and then you'll see the blue BLMPs. Now, remember what we just covered. The BLMP round has a brass base ring on it. The all brass shell is smooth at the base. So this can be fired from the five inch guns. Notice it even has a movable nose cone so that the fuse setting projectile hoist can make it live as it's going up just like a real exploding shell. Whereas these don't really. Uh, they do have removable nose caps that you can fill them with sand. However, they're not, they, they don't have all the fittings and things for the fuse setting projectile hoist to act on them. So what the heck are these for? Are they just display pieces? That's certainly what they were used for at the end of their career. But the reason the US military made so freaking many of these uh, is because those are used with the practice loading machines that Iowa class battleships would have carried in the 40s and 50s. Uh, on Iowa's, this would have been aft of the second funnel and forward of the after fire control tower in that open piece of deck up there. We've covered that in the past. There's even a fake uh, scuttle in the deck for getting rid of your uh, powder canisters after you've used them so that uh, a gun crew, without having to expend ammunition and whatnot in their actual gun house, can all get around this practice loading machine. And it's, um, we, we've seen them on other museum ships. Here, here's some footage of a three inch practice loading machine we've seen on Slater. Very similar to the real breach of the gun, you pretty much can throw one of these brass shells and then a wooden dummy powder casing in uh, the breach of the gun. And it has almost like a spring loaded piece that'll kick that forward as if the rammer was pushing it in, but instead of firing or doing anything, it just pushes it into like a basket in the front of it. So you can keep playing hot potato with these shells and uh, practice to get up to the rate of fire that you're supposed to have with one of these big guns. Uh, and it, it helps the gun crew work out. These each weigh 55 pounds. Uh, the powder canisters weigh 22 pounds. So it's not a light and easy thing. And a well-trained gun crew with a five inch gun is supposed to achieve a rate of fire 15 rounds per minute, one round every four seconds. And really well-trained gun crews are known to have fired 22 rounds per minute. So you don't get that without practice. There are up to 14 guys standing around this thing, passing these shells around, setting the fuses, making sure to reset the rammer and all these other uh, jobs that they're doing. They have to work together to do this, and it's even good to practice the jobs of the other people in case you take casualties in combat, and you might have to now start doing other people's jobs as well. So, uh, the US Navy provided their ships with ways of doing this, and most ships armed with a three inch gun or larger uh, would have carried some sort of practice loading machine for those guns during World War II. The five inch guns fire a much wider range of projectiles because it was such a ubiquitous weapon system. Uh, and so the markings for them are not as simple as with the 16 inch guns. Um, all of the same marking styles apply. A yellow band at the top is still the composition D as the explosive filler. Although you will often see five inch shells with different bands. Uh, if they had TNT or uh, white phosphorus or uh, other various types of explosives. We're not going to run through that whole list today because there's just so many of them. Uh, and 
whereas the 16 inch shells are, are purely surface to surface, these are true dual purpose weapons. Surface to air, surface to surface, um, you name it, these shells can do it. One uh, interesting type that Iowa class battleships would have always carried were star shells, and those are painted blue like BLMP, and they have a white star on them. Uh, so that one's probably the easiest one to tell the difference of. Uh, the star shells have a flare and a parachute inside, so you, there's a special way to set the Mark I Able computer. It's even got a, a module on top specifically for computing this to fire the star shell above and behind the target you want to shoot at so that as this flare parachutes down behind it, your enemy ship is perfectly silhouetted for you, but they cannot see you at all. So those are the various colors of shells that you'll likely see at uh, other museum ships as you visit, and the reasons why they come in different looks and colors. If you have any other questions about things you see on museum ships or um, other stuff like that, drop them in the comment section down below and maybe they'll find their way into a future video. This one is, is like I said, one of the very common questions that we get asked. While we've covered it in other videos where we talk about the shells, uh, we've never done a deep dive specifically on these in their own video. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to help the museum. You can also help us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.